here we go. This is the best thing Tom Fornelli does. Whoa, whoa, come he, on. He, he gives us the worst teams in college football. Last week, Hawaii was the worst. Nebraska, UMass, Kansas, New Mexico State. This week, it's a new batch of the bottom five from Tom Fornelli handing out his Fs. It's a new tradition here on CBS Sports <laughs> HQ. And we start with your fifth worst team of the week, Tom. It's a team that lost to another team that was making its FBS debut, and they lost bad. Yeah, you know, we see it every single year where teams start the season with games against FCS opponents, but apparently people forgot to tell Middle Tennessee that James Madison's no longer in the FCS, and they have been one of the best programs at the FCS level in recent seasons. And whew, they showed it against Middle Tennessee. They beat them 44-7. to But that score really doesn't do it justice because the Dukes put up 548 yards of offense while holding Middle Tennessee to 119. This was not a fluke. This was nothing funny. This was just straight blowout by James Madison, a team that is a former FCS champion coming into the FBS looking like it's ready to start playing in the FBS playoff once it gets there. It is interesting to see these FCS powers come up and show that they are a lot better than some of the lower level FBS yes. teams. They are an 11 point dog at Colorado State, are the Blue Raiders from Middle Tennessee this week. All right, your number four bottom five team is an ACC program that uh, now has uh, a lot of pressure on its head coach. Yeah, this is a Louisville team that is coming into the season, and honestly, I had high expectations for them, and they got clowned in their very first game of the season, going on the road to Syracuse and losing 31-7. to And frankly, I have to include them on this list because I said they just made me feel bad and look bad because I thought they were going to be good this year. Then they start the year losing 31-7 to to Syracuse. I can't have that. This is a team that went on the road, had three turnovers last week. Malik Cunningham, a guy who I've been hyping up through no touchdowns, Two interceptions. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ball, Syracuse quarterback Garrett Schrader, 330 total yards, three touchdowns. Running back Sean Tucker, 184 total yards and two touchdowns. They were carving this Louisville defense to shreds. And now, if things just can't get any worse, Louisville's playing on the road Friday night at UCF. Fun little trend. Louisville was a road favorite last week against Syracuse. It lost in history. Teams that lose their first game of the season as road favorites and are then on the road again in week two are 2-12-1 against the spread. That does not bode well for the Cardinals on Friday night against a good UCF team. Scott Satterfield, more like hot cedar feels. Yeah, and, th and that line's only five and a half. That's that's surprising that it's that, it's that low, a one-score spread at UCF. The place is going to be packed and rocking. It's a big game for the Knights. Uh, by the way, Satterfield... It, it, it's a tough situation there because he, he does have a really good recruiting class next year. The 23 cl class is ranked in the top 20 right now at 24-7 sports. But if they don't turn things around, he might be done in his fourth season. Your number three worst team after week one is a team that may have looked worse than anybody. But it was because they were playing Georgia. Yeah, the Oregon Ducks fell all the way out of the AP poll. They came into the season ranked number 11, and after just watching one game, every single person that thought, you know what, this is one of the 15 best teams in the country, turned around and said, nah, they're probably not even top 50 after the beating that Georgia put on them. It was a 46-point win by the Bulldogs and the Ducks. It's like, you know, it's Dan Lanning's first game, and when you're a new coach, you kind of just look for silver linings, things that you can be happy about, things to give you hope about going forward. There weren't any. Nothing good happened to Oregon in this game. Bo Nix, in his first start after transferring from Auburn, looked exactly like the Bo Nix we saw at Auburn get his skull crumped Georgia every single season. 4.7 yards per attempt, two interceptions, one of which was a truly head-scratching decision on his part. And Georgia, at that point, in the second half, like they called off the dogs, and they were still stunting on the Ducks. This is a team that had seven different players get snaps in the run game or carries. They had 10 different guys catching passes. I'm pretty sure there were Georgia fans in attendance they were sending on the field to play some snaps. Maybe Ugga was out there getting some snaps. This is an Oregon team that might still prove to be one of the better teams in the Pac-12. I'm putting them here this week as one of the five worst teams in the country. But I am keeping in mind that Georgia can make a lot of good teams look this bad. So maybe the Ducks will get out of the bottom five as the season goes along. Dan Lanning, the new head coach there at Oregon. He was the defensive coordinator at Georgia. The most his defense gave up last season in the regular season was 17 points. 
gave up seven touchdowns. A little touchdowns. different now. Yeah, with, uh, with the Oregon Ducks. All right, your number two worst team of the week. Oh, you're going after a service academy. Navy, number two, after losing at home to an FCS team. Yeah, they fell 14 to 7 to the fighting Joe Bidens of Delaware. This is not a good situation for Navy to be in. And this is, quite frankly, this is kind of a worrying trend. Because if we go back to the 2020 season, Navy is only 7 and 16. If we go back to 2018, they're 21 and 28. And that includes an 11 and 2 record in 2019. So, based on what we saw in this first week against Delaware, we're looking at a Navy program that is about to have its fourth bad season of the last five and the truly worrisome thing about what happened last week against delaware is this is an option team they are built on running the ball it's their entire identity they only had 2.9 yards per carry against delaware now i'm keeping open the possibility that, as i mentioned they're the fighting joe biden's this is where the president went to school he's the commander in chief maybe navy didn't want to make the boss angry mm. last week and gave the gave the boss a feel-good win but I don't think that's the case. I think this is a bad Navy team, and I have some questions about Ken Yamatololo's future there with the midshipmen, and I just don't think that long-term the move to the American Athletic Conference is working out for them. A sign of respect to the president. I guess that's all you can say for, for Navy in that game. All right, Tom Fornelli, who is your worst team in college football? Oh, Chris, you know who my worst team is in college football. You've known I'm your entire life, and you haven't been able to escape it. It's the <laughs> Iowa Hawkeyes who won last week 7-3 to three in the most misleading score in history because those seven points, they weren't via a touchdown. It was a field goal and two safeties. This was a terrible performance. Quite frankly, South Dakota State has to be the only team in the universe Iowa was capable of beating last week, <laughs> and it just happened to be the team that Iowa had on the schedule. They had 166 yards of offense and 479 yards of worth of punts. You don't want to have a 4-1 to one punt yardage to total offense ratio. Things typically don't go your way when that happens. And in fact, there's here's a fun stat for you. Since 2020, eight FBS teams have won a game when punting at least eight times. Iowa is responsible for six of those wins. As that graphic shows, Iowa had 166 yards of offense last week. They're the first team since last year to win a game with fewer than 175 yards of offense when that team was Iowa against Iowa State. And pushing this point further, Iowa's average starting field position last week was the 42-yard line. It was the fifth best starting field position that any team in the country has had for a game this year, and they could still only manage seven points with four of those points coming via the defense and the safeties. You know, we talked earlier about Dabo Swinney getting an $11.5 million in a year. I need to know why Phil Parker is not getting $15 million in a year because the <laughs> Iowa defensive coordinator is clearly the most important person on that coaching staff because without him, this team would not win a game ever. And frankly, at the end of the first quarter, I know we turn and we wave to the kids in the Iowa Children's Hospital, but you know every fan in that building wants to turn right back around and wave goodbye to Brian Ferentz when they're done. Oh, and, and maybe Spencer Petrus as well, who started that game, did not get benched, and is going to start the game this week, the rivalry game against Iowa State. Somehow Iowa is a three-and-a-half-point favorite. I, I'm not <laughs> sure Take how. Take the clones. <laughs> I guess it's going to be a couple of safeties. The Hawkeyes cover with a 4 nothing win. Tom Fornelli with us here giving us the worst five teams in college football. He'll do it every Thursday here on HQ. Here they are this week. Iowa number one, followed by Navy. Oregon after getting smoked by Georgia. Louisville got their doors blown off in the dome by Syracuse. And Middle Tennessee outgained by about 400 yards against a team playing its first game in the FCS. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.